And tomorrow we have non-farm payrolls, um, which is a big one because this is for March, which was the first, which was obviously when we had these uh, bank failures. So what's your view on that, on the labor market in the U.S.? What are you anticipating for tomorrow? So first, step back, big picture, why do we care about the labor market and Victus? How does this fit into the, the policy cycle and, and, and the growth cycle and, and, and the inflation cycle? Well, earlier we said that inflation was running at six, to, excuse me, services inflation was running between six and 8% annualized. So what's the proximate cause of services inflation? It's wage growth, right? And so wage growth is running, call it six to 8%, depending on which measure you look at or income growth. And uh, that's driving the services inflation. So how does the Fed get services inflation down, given it's such an important weighting in the U.S. economy? The U.S. economy is very services oriented. Uh, the answer is uh, the labor market, right? So if you look at a chart of wage growth and the unemployment rate, you'll see that they are highly inverse. Uh, the, the, the inverse correlation between the headline unemployment rate and the Atlanta Fed's wage tracker is about negative 68%. So in other words, how do you get wage growth down? Uh, you have to increase the unemployment rate. So how does the Fed go about getting the unemployment rate up? Or what, are, what is the sequencing uh, um, of layoffs? It sounds sad to say, but it's the collateral damage, I guess. What's the sequencing of layoffs? So historically, the first place that you see layoffs uh, tends to be very cyclical uh, goods producing industries. I think manufacturing, think residential construction. And then uh, the Fed, that's the transmission mechanism for uh, layoffs in the broader economy. So if someone in manufacturing gets laid off, well, they spend two thirds of their income on services. And so they obviously cut back on all of their spending, including services that hits services, businesses like say restaurants or hospitality or you know, even financial services, whatever. And that's how you end up getting layoffs in, in services. And that's how you get inflation uh, slack in the labor market, inflation coming back down to target, right? Or at least that's how, historically how it's happened. So what that means is we should be watching the labor market very closely. And in particular, we should be looking for uh, uh, labor market data in those cyclical goods producing industries to the extent that we can. So uh, as of the time of recording, we've actually had a decent amount of labor market data this week come out. We haven't gotten the employment situation yet. But uh, so far on, on Thursday, we've gotten the initial claims data. We saw significant upward revisions. They're still low relative to history, right? Um, but in rate of change terms, they're, they're just sort of starting to increase. We're seeing what we might call preliminary weakness uh, in the labor market. We've also gotten the challenger jobs cut, job cuts data, uh, job cut announcements, which is what challenger gray and Christmas track, uh, look like they're trending higher as well. And so that's another sign of preliminary weakness. It's not the big nonlinear crisis spike, but it's uh, sort of the phase preceding that. And then we also got the ADP employment data. And obviously the headline number came in at 145,000 uh, net new job additions for March. It was a little bit below consensus. What we really care about Invictus is uh, what they reported for manufacturing. And we saw 30,000 net layoffs in the manufacturing sector. So uh, we'll be watching the headline employment data as it comes out on Friday, of course, but what we're really looking for is confirmation of those layoffs in the manufacturing sector. Because if we start to see layoffs in the manufacturing sector, uh, that's the canary in the coal mine that the labor market is starting to break. And uh, so if we have one piece of advice for, for our listeners, it would be track the labor market and more specifically track the manufacturing sector.